In this video, we will be covering the anatomy of the common earthworm, Lumbricus tessridius. The earthworm belongs to the kingdom Animalia, Phylum, Annelidia. The annelids are the phylum that is composed of segmented worms. These worms have a body cavity known as a true salome, and the lining of the cavity is called the peritoneum. Earthworms belong to the class Oligochaeta. This class is composed of both terrestrial and uh, freshwater worms. The worms range in length from 0.5 millimeters up to 2 to 3 meters, such as the giant gypsum earthworm of Australia. When studying the external anatomy of the earthworm, the prostrum is a small fleshy projection over the mouth and is not considered as a segment. The anus is the small slit in the last segment. About a third of the way back from the prostrum is a swelling in an area. Uh, this thick area is called the clitellum, and this structure secretes mucus, which functions in reproduction. Although the oligochaetas do not have any kind of, of uh, parapods as seen in other marine annelids, they do have setae. Now these setae are small bristles and they're located on the ventral surface uh, and the sides of the trunk. And you'll have uh, two setae per side on each segment. So each segment has a total of four setae. And if you run your finger along the ventral surface in an anterior direction, you can feel these locomotor structures. Each segment except the first three and the last also contain pairs of microscopic op openings called nephridiopores. And these openings are used for uh, the excretory system. So here we can see the prostrum, the mouth, we can see those nephridia pores, we can see the little setae, again two per side or four per segment, and we can see the clitellum. Now additionally, a pair of swollen areas with sperm duct openings are located on each side of the ventral surface on segment 15. And the oviduct openings are located uh, on the ventral surface of segment 14. Now this is because the earthworms are hermaphroditic, so both male and female reproductive organs occur in one individual. The male structures consist of three pairs of seminal vesicles, two pairs of small testes, and a pair of sperm ducts. The female structures consist of a pair of ovaries in segment 13, a pair of oviduct openings in segment 14, and two pairs of seminal receptacles located in the segments 9 and 10. And this allows the earthworms to cross-fertilize one another. Additionally, when we look at the earthworms, they do have cutaneous breathing, meaning that they do exchange uh, oxygen and CO2 through their skin. When dissecting the earthworm, you want to concentrate on the area from the clitellum forward to the mouth. This will be the area that will have all of the uh, internal structures that we will be interested in. Past the clitellum, we will be seeing just the uh, intestines. Now you will pin the earthworm on both the mouth and the anus, and we will make a longitudinal incision on its um, ventral surface. Now once you've done the, the uh, dissection, you'll see that the mouth leads to a slightly expanded muscular area known as the pharynx, followed by a short esophagus, uh, and then the food will pass from the esophagus to an enlarged crop. The crop is where it, uh, the food is stored temporarily. The crop opens into a thickened muscular gizzard where food is broken up with the aid of small soil particles. Food will then pass down through the uh, intestines where the digestion and absorption occur. And finally, the remnants will be excreted as solid waste through the anus. Again, the earthworms are hermaphroditic. And the male structures consist of three pairs of seminal vesicles. 
two pairs of the testes, and a pair of sperm ducts. The seminal vesicles are these large structures that are located on either side of the esophagus from segment 9 through 11. However, the last pair are very large and they may extend up into segment 14. The testes are located uh, in segment 10 and 11 and are enclosed within the seminal vesicles. The sperm duct would extend to the um, opening, the sperm duct opening on the ventral side of segment 15. However, it is not visible in this diagram. The female reproductive structures consist of the ovaries in the segment 13 area and um, they would go to the uh, openings of the oviduct, again not visible in this diagram. And then finally you would see the two pairs of seminal receptacles located in segment 9 and 10. Now the circulatory system of the earthworm is a closed circulatory system composed primarily of the dorsal and ventral blood vessels. And here we can see the dorsal blood vessel. They are connected to one another by lateral vessels known as capillaries. The dorsal vessels will carry the blood anteriorly and the ventral uh, blood vessels carry the blood posteriorly. You'll notice that right in here we have the heart and the earthworm has five hearts that are present which surround the esophagus. These hearts are anterior lateral vessels or little loops and they help force the blood from the dorsal to the ventral side. Now this is a very complex structure for an invertebrate to have. So with a quick review we have our mouth and that goes into the pharynx which follows the, into the esophagus, the crop, the gizzard, and finally the intestines. We can see each of the various segments. We can see the um, reproductive structures of the seminal vesicles with the testes present. We can see the uh, seminal receptacles. We can see the ovaries. We can see the, um, the five uh, hearts and we can see the dorsal and ventral uh, blood vessels located. Additionally, you'll notice that it does have a small nervous system composed of a small structure we call the, the brain, not to the level of our brains, of course, and then the nerve cord that continues down. Now, the, uh, additionally, when we look at the intestines and we were to do a cross-section of the intestines, we would see that the um, dorsal surface of the intestines is folded inward to form a structure known as the typhlosol, and this increases the absorptive surface area of the intestines so that more absorption of nutrients can occur. And finally, each segment except the first three and the last contain a pair of microscopic openings known as nephridia pores. And these nephridia pores, and here we can see the nephridium and it would open to the pores, uh, these are the openings of the excretory system. And so internally, the excretory system is known as the nephridium. Finally, uh, as we review over the earthworm, on the skin it has several um, light receptive structures that allow the uh, earthworm to sense light, in essence to allow it to burrow away from the light, and it has various chemical receptors throughout the skin that allow it to taste its surroundings. Now this would also allow the earthworm to have a sense of touch as well. And so here we can see a cross section with the digestive tube and again the infolds that would allow for increased surface area within the intestines is known as the typhlosol. We can see the nephridium here. The nephridia pore would be located here and over here. And then um, as we look at this cross section, the uh, body surface secretes um, a substance known as cuticle by the epidermis. And this is a mucus level that helps, one, for the um, earthworm to move through the soil and as a lubricant, and secondly, to help aid in the earthworm uh, to prevent it from drying out due to its uh, cutaneous breathing. 
Below the epidermis is a layer of circular muscles, we can see right here, and then is a thick layer below that of the longitudinal muscles. Now these two layers of muscles act to extend and contract the body for locomotion. And there you have the anatomy of the common earthworm.